Peace. Infinite waters diving deep once again. Woo! Breathing in that good ass prana in the heart of nature, baby. Ten signs you're highly awake. I receive a lot of messages from people writing to me like this. Ralph, I think maybe our world is run by aliens. And we ain't even had breakfast yet. Can I get a hello? <laughs> okay, this is going to be a fun video as always. Now, I've been sharing for a long time. I've been talking about indigos, crystals, the third eye. And I've been doing this for years. Okay? And it's helped out a lot of people. Right? But really and truly, I'm going to share with you what helped me along my journey. No... I was awakening and it starts with this you see there are levels of consciousness and a lot of people forget about this okay I've spoken about I've spoken about the four levels of consciousness drone artist alchemist wizard go and watch that video right now so the first sign you're highly awake is that you go through a dark night of the soul <gasps> Don't worry about it. And a lot of people don't want to talk about this, right? Before you can even enter awakening on the highest level, you've got to go through a dark night of the soul, which is where your world, your reality, what you believe to be true is shattered right before your eyes. And now you wake up to the truth of who you are. And then everybody's happy for you, including the cat down the road. But you see, a lot of people... They haven't experienced it yet, right? You're just reading books, going to lectures, seminars, but you haven't gone through that process. You haven't experienced the lowest lows. You haven't come into contact with your shadow side. That's why shadow work is so important, right? Therefore, you haven't experienced the highest highs, which are your awakening. Now, what happened to me along my journey? Yeah, I went really crazy, like really crazy. I had a breakdown, but my breakdown was my breakthrough. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. And once, once you go through the dark night of the soul, what basically happens is that it's almost like you are a caterpillar turning into a butterfly or something else what what are you turning into right you're going through the metamorphosis of the greater you you're letting go of the old you and you are now experiencing a whole new you you don't even look the same you don't feel the same and you definitely don't smell the same <laughs> what do you smell of nobody knows right so what helped me was to realize that in essence, I was shedding skin. I was becoming a new person. And I had to go through a very troubling experience first and then make it out alive. And sometimes the dark night of the soul, the dark night of the soul will only come to you when you don't want it to. Okay, that's the trip about it. You can't like say, I want to pay for a dark night of the soul. It's actually your illumination because without the darkness, you would not be able to see the stars. Slow motion this side. So that's the first sign you're highly awake. You made it out of the dark night of the soul. Now, the second sign is this, baby. Conspiracies, yeah. You're beginning to see that there's a little bit of truth to a lot of these conspiracies out there. In fact, word conspiracy it was created to actually shut people up because once again if you want to hide the truth just say hey that's a conspiracy right those are the crazy people okay who are starting to they're starting to question reality don't do that <laughs> right so when i always tell people how do you even know there are seven billion people on the planet how do you know you only know because someone has told you that. You only know because somebody has told you there are 7 billion people on the planet. But you won't actually know until you go around counting each one. 
The Hopi said, the one who tells the story rules the world, meaning the whole of life is one massive story. It's a stage. That's why Shakespeare said, the whole world is a stage. <laughs> right, we'll come to Shakespeare. I'm gonna do a whole video on Shakespeare, by the way. Right, so I started to realize, okay, when people tell me stuff, I'm always raising my app. I'm raising my eyebrow a little bit like this, like, like, oh my gosh. Like really, that's, it's a possibility, right? 9-11, possibility. We don't really know what happened. Media, mind control. Yes, I'm a psychologist. I study the mind. I'm a criminologist. It's so easy to mind control someone. Just put them in front of a TV growing up. <gasps> Wait a minute. That was my whole life. <laughs> and that was probably yours too. Okay, images control the mind, the subconscious mind, because it works based off imagery. Therefore, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, the second sign being you're starting to notice conspiracies might be real, you are starting to realize that the truth is not as simple as you once thought. There are many realities, one world, many realities, even parallel universes. We'll come to that later, right? So you realize there is a little bit of truth to every conspiracy you've always thought is true. Got to do more research though. Now, the third sign, you're highly awake. What I found out along my journey is that I started to look at the cat down the road and, and the dog down the road. Oh, the dog down the road, of course. Look into a dog's eyes right now. You got a dog, right? Look into his eyes. Got a cat, look into his eyes. Got a hamster, a rat. Look into his eyes. You're going to see somebody in there. Like, you don't know who it is, but you know there is a living being in there, a being that feels who has emotions. Now, I love animals. I'm going to open up an animal farm with you. What? You're backing out right now? We're going to do it, okay? We, we agreed on that. We did last week. So I started to realize, okay, the reason why a lot of people are so insensitive when it comes to eating animals, okay, is because they don't kill them, <laughs> right? I've seen a cow being killed right in front of me. And when you see that, you realize this cow is so strong, it doesn't want to go out like that. Nobody does. Would you like it if I did that to you? Absolutely not. So I realized, like, being a vegan over 12 years, inspiring millions and millions of people all around the world, Seven Day Vegan Challenge, is this, that being a vegan is about a level of consciousness. You see, a lot of people say, okay, I want to look good, I want to get a bikini body, you want big muscles. No, that's like the totally wrong reason why most people continue being a vegan because otherwise you're going to go into relapse after a few years you go back to your old diet right people who have been vegan for 10 years plus like myself ask them ask them why are you a vegan and they're not going to say oh because i want to look good chances are they're going to say it's because of the animals these are living beings and they deserve as much right to live as you do slow motion this side and it's all karmic. The reason why the world is the way it is is because we butcher animals, therefore, in essence, we butcher ourselves. To break out of that karmic loop, you've got to leave the animals alone. Like, you've got to leave the animals alone. Let me repeat that. You've got to leave the animals alone. But what am I going to eat, Ralph? Have you been to my farm yet? My strawberry farm. Strawberries, right? Lots and lots and lots of strawberries, right? Lots of acai, okay? Lots of grapes. Resveratrol, get it going. Okay, antioxidants. There's so much food you can eat. Leave the animals alone. That's what I had to tell myself and I did. Thank goodness, over 12 years ago. Now the cows actually smile at me, like and it feels good, right? The fourth sign, you're highly awake, is this. This is what's helped me along my journey. That 
You see, a lot of people who are highly awake, they become their own guru. At the same time, it doesn't mean that they don't listen to other people. I still listen to other people. In fact, I had a mentor who helped me along my journey. So I'm indebted, indebted to him. And a lot of people, they owe a lot to the person who first awakened them. Maybe you read a book, maybe you watch a documentary. That person who you learn off, you owe a lot to because they helped you to the next level. So a sign I realized I was highly awake was that I was letting go of secondhand information. Now this is what I call books, even videos. This is amazing though, because this is what we need to take us to the next level. But what was happening was with books, for example, when I was reading a book before, being highly awake, I would say, okay, this is the absolute truth. As I was becoming more awake, I still read the book. I love reading, but I was using more discernment to realize, okay, I've got to start writing my own book, right? How about that? Instead of just reading, 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 you've got to realize what is even greater than a book is your firsthand experience is your first-hand experience. By the way, buy Feel Alive by Ralph Spar on Amazon, <laughs> right? What is more important than a book is your first-hand experience. Now, for me, I realized that there's an old saying, a Zen saying, before enlightenment, you read a lot of books. After enlightenment, you burn all your books. Why? Because you have now become the living book. Inside of you is like a million encyclopedias. Read yourself, study everything, but study yourself first. Mm. Slow motion inside. Mm. That's why a lot of people, we get manipulated through our mind is because we're watching so many television shows, we're getting programmed, growing up that is, that we forget about us. Like what is our story? What is our experience? Because for so long, we've just been feeding off secondhand information. And once you go on the journey within, that's when you really start to become highly awake. Okay? Number five is this, that a lot of people who are highly awake or in that process, and all of us are going to be, I'm not any different. Well, actually, I'm an alien. That's another story, right? They have a deep connection with the ancient world. Now, the big connection with the ancient world is that a lot of people remember being like myself. I remember being in ancient Egypt getting my foot massaged, right, by an Egyptian goddess. And plus, it was a beautiful day that day. Now, a lot of people, they have visions of being in ancient Greece, right, in the Colosseum, in Temple of Apollo, in Suma, okay, Iraq, right? They have visions of being in ancient Europe, near Stonehenge, right? These come to them in visions from meditations, meaning they have experiences of their past life. Now I've spoken about past life regression and it all starts there because nerd, I'm a nerd, nobody ever really dies. That's the whole joke, right? Because <laughs> energy can't be destroyed. We are living many, 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 many times over. And that's why a lot of us, we have synchronicity we recognize certain people there are no accidents or coincidences in this life only divine order so for me i was i i was reminding myself like i i was in egypt right and how did i know because when this channel first started most people had just been diving for like a week or so but any proper deep dive if you are a true deep diver stand up right now if you are a true deep diver you know what was my first username Say it out loud. Say it. Exactly. Kemet Prince One. Kemet meaning Egypt, Prince One, the first Egyptian prince. Past life regression. Then, <laughs> this is the next phase. This is infinite waters. We are about even breaking past labels. We're on the next level, right? So it starts by having a remembrance. Uh, 
reconnection back to the ancient world and learning from the ancient wisdom because they were a lot wiser than us. I don't think we're that wise today for some reason, right? Look at what we're doing to the planet. Goodness gracious. What's number six? The sixth sign you're highly awake. Now, what helped me along my journey was this, to have more questions than answers. Now, if you don't question certain things you read in the newspapers or watch on the news, if you even watch the news, you watch the news, really? Okay, don't worry about it. Right, so for me, I stopped watching the news, mainstream news, because I realized a lot of it was just an agenda. And I stopped tuning into mainstream information point blank. And that's how I became even highly, even more highly awake. Because I started to realize, okay, you got to realize that when you have a lot of questions it means you are going to get more answers. If you have no questions, you're only going to accept the answer which is given to you. And that's why so many people are asleep. They're in the drone archetype state. Sleepers. Now, that's fine. I've been there a long, 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 long time ago. But through my awakening, I had to start asking questions. What is the moon? What is the sun? Why did we come here to planet Earth? These are the big questions which lead you on the journey within to become highly awake. And you've got to have a sense of humor because there are some crazy questions. There are some crazy, crazy, crazy questions you've got to ask yourself. Like, what are those? And what the hell are you wearing today, right? That's as, probably as deep as we get. Now, number seven is that you're going to start to lose friends. Oh, no. Don't worry, you'll still have your 5,000 Facebook friends though, right? Because they're real. Now, you're going to start to lose friends. It happened to me along my journey. I've been diving deep for so long, I think I live in the water. Mm. Slow motion this side. Mm. Right? And I've lost a lot of friends because as you change your frequency, the people you meet, Sometimes there's just a, there's not an energetic match. Like you can't be in the same room as this person that you even grew up with. Why? Because there is nothing to talk about. Okay. <laughs> They're talking about the game. You're talking about the third eye. Just not going to happen. Okay. So what happened when I started to lose friends? I started to gain my real friends, in essence, I started to reconnect with my soul family. Now on Infinite Waters, we connected with so many people, considering what we're talking about, right? It's just me talking and look what we've done. Imagine if I did pranks, check this out. Oh, no time for pranks right now, right? So considering what we're talking about, indigos, look at how many people we've connected with, right? So, people are all around. I get over a thousand messages every single day. And I'm like, you think I got time to read all of this? <laughs> I've met real people along this journey with real experiences and I'm learning from them because everybody I'm connecting with is already a master. Let me say it again. Everybody I'm connecting with is already a master based on what I'm talking about. This is not for you if you aren't on this same journey. You better bounce, right? This is only for the deep divers right now. And that's why we're sharing, we're growing and things like that. So you lose friends on the awakening journey, but you also gain new friends. Now, number eight is where you go from belief to knowing. That is a sign you are highly awake. So I used to believe like the world is not what it seems like just a little bit not what it seems now i actually know we are living in a holographic universe right <laughs> right we're living in a world made of stories his story which means his story history is written by the winners of war so it means it's fabricated basically now when I started to realize belief to knowing, 
obviously, because we're moving out of Pisces, we already moved out of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. Now, the age of Aquarius is the water bearer, the information age, the information age, which means more downloads, meaning more knowing, right? You're seeing the numbers, 1111, 333, no accidents. You know what's up right now. You know we are living in a universe full of mathematical design. Number nine, you're not just a consumer anymore, you're a producer. That is a big sign you're highly awake. Now, there was a time when I just used to sit down and watch popcorn, as soon as I would wake up, go on the computer, but then I realized, what am I actually doing with my life? What am I creating, for goodness sakes? You gotta ask yourself right now, what am I creating? Because you don't wanna just be a consumer, trust me. You wanna be a producer. You wanna be a, you wanna be a content creator. And that's a sign you are highly awake, right? 50-50, consume 50, produce 50. For everything you consume, whether you read a book, you gotta write a book. Whether you watch a video, you gotta make one. And then you start to realize, oh, I get it. I get it why a lot of the world is not really producing stuff. I challenge you right now to make a YouTube video. That is my challenge to you. If you've never made a YouTube video, I challenge you to make a video. And then my next challenge to you is to get 100,000 subscribers. That's a, that's a challenge to you. Get 100,000 subscribers. Now, what you're going to see is that, oh, yeah, it's really hard. YouTube is the hardest platform to make it because there is so much out there. So being a producer, whether you want to make a website, see if you can make a living off it. It's going to find it's going to be tough, going to be difficult. You can do it, though, if your heart is in it. Just like you can easily get 100,000 subscribers if you know what you're talking to and the people appreciate whatever you have to share with them. No problem. But you see, you got to do the work. Either way, you got to wake up, you got to research cameras, you got to know about web design, all of this. Who wants to do that? So that's why a lot of people just consume information. Once again, growth doesn't happen that way. The greatest growth is when you consume, but you also create. Because through creation, creation is about expansion. Through consuming, now that's why so many people are overwhelmed with information. They become saturated with information. Oversaturated. They can't move because you forgot that you've got to create you got to share your vision with the world. And I always encourage that. That's a sign you're highly awake because you realize just one person can make a huge, huge difference. Now, another sign <laughs> you're highly awake is this, that you're starting to realize that race, nationality, all of these things were created to separate humanity. They are ego-based concepts. And in essence, underneath it all, we are energy. Okay, that's a big sign you're highly awake. And that's what I had to realize. Oh, I get it. You see, if you've got so many different countries, it means you're going to have so many different wars, separation. But imagine, ever hear that song by John Lennon? There's no countries. Oh my gosh, what are we fighting for? Slow motion this side. Can I get a hello? Yeah. Okay. And that's the, the last big sign, but I'll go into another one. Do a few more extras, right? You realize that words are vibrations. Thoughts are realities in our body. Therefore, you become conscious of whatever you say, you become whatever you think you become and whatever you do, you become. So there you have it in a nutshell. But more so when you are highly awake, all you do is say, feel so good to be alive, baby. Can I get a hello? There, <laughs> have a beautiful day. We're out here. Woo. Infinite waters. Diving deep once again. Stay well.
Stay healthy. Peace. You!